to Tanya Plibersek, um, she really does seem someone who is a bit gullible herself when race is in the equation, to put it uh, mildly, Rowan. She's just made another silly call that I'm not sure anyone else has picked up. She's approved a massive new solar farm in the Northern Territory. Here's what it looked like. Hideous. Approved that, plus its uh, cable part uh, way to uh, Singapore to sell the electricity. And all this just days before the Northern Territory election. But here's the thing. She made this, this claim about this wind farm. It's got a planned install capacity of four gigawatts. She said the energy generated by this project is almost six times the amount of energy of a 700 megawatt large nuclear reactor could deliver. Rowan, that scares me because if Plibersec knew anything, she's, a, she's actually con confusing install capacity with night and day perfect light with what solar farms actually deliver, which is typically, obviously, a quarter of that, less than a quarter of it. So this only produces probably less than twice the electricity of that nuclear reactor. What does this story tell you? Well, it reinforces, it tells me the ignorance of the Labor Party, the Greens and the Teals on the issue of nuclear power. I was just speaking earlier this evening to an expert on nuclear who was telling me that, you know, we could have nuclear within five years if we actually went about it seriously. And the CSIRO, uh, you know, uh, uh, reports into the costs and that are just absurd and can be quickly debunked. Um, but more importantly, that photo you showed of what uh, is supposed to be something where we find appealing, it's the most hideous and ugly thing I've ever the scene. If you can imagine destroying the Australian landscape, whether it is, I mean, how patronising it. Oh, so it's out in the desert. Therefore, you know, we don't care about it. We don't care how many, uh, you know, spotted ginks or whatever are out there in the desert. They can all, you know, uh, the, the vastness of this enterprise, it is huge. Well, my first tip, Andrew, I'll be absolutely brutally honest with you. I'll bet anyone who wants to bet that this thing will never get off the ground, as it were. Uh, we've seen, as you portrayed brilliantly, you showed brilliantly last night on your show, uh, three strikes uh, for um, uh, the Bowen, uh, you know, renewables revolution, where we're seeing every project that they put up, whether it's green hydrogen, whether it's electric vehicles, whatever it is, today it's the great big announcement. And sure enough, within six months, the so-called investors have run a mile or the thing doesn't stack up or it doesn't work or whatever. This project, I, you know, it's my bet, it will go the same way as all those other massive white elephants. It will never see the light of day. And in fact, Cannon Brooks himself has said he won't actually be, uh, be t signing off on the investment uh, for another three years. So a long time to go before to change your mind on that. And if you even look at that little map with the wire going up to Singapore and all the rest, it looks like something that, you know, a kid had dreams, dreamt, dreamt up as a, as, as a way. But more importantly, to your issue about nuclear, Andrew, what she doesn't understand, she, they clearly don't understand how nuclear energy works because the entire point about energy is the amount of physical space you need to take up to generate the volume of energy you need to generate. That solar farm stretching over however many thousand acres, literally up a handful of uranium could generate the same amount of energy. That is what the equation is. The equation is not what it's possibly capable of generating. The equation is simply over the lifespan, the half-life or whatever it is of the project, how much can it generate for the space it takes up and destroys? And in the instance of, of that, oh, it is the most primitive, kind. backward idea. It's just... Typically, <laughs> Rowan, once again, it's, you've often been criticised. You've been too kind. To Plibersec, the reason it's out in the <laughs> desert is that no one could have it on arable land, of course, right? Or anywhere near settlement. <laughs> but the fact that it's in the middle of the desert out there means that the horrendous cost of ho hooking it up to the grid makes that electricity too expensive. So I'm going to double on your offer and say, yes, I doubt this will be made, <laughs> uh, will go ahead in the end, because Singapore hasn't even signed up to take this power. I must say one other thing. I want to touch, you made a point about five years, a nuclear power station could be built in five years. China, and Plibersec should hear this before knocking in nuclear, China has just said yes to building 11 more nuclear reactors, did it this week, 11 more nuclear reactors in five years. And here's this government saying, no, we can't have, the, it'll take 20 years. Honestly, <laughs> you're so right on this one. Rowan, can't wait to hear what you say on insiders uh, about this, uh, outsiders about this on Sunday. Or even Running outside, Andrew. Thanks for your time. Now, after... <laughs> Thanks. I'm very yeah. excited. I'm Bye. sorry. I did...
Mate, you're seeing your country being destroyed by these ideologues, right? You've got to say something. If you're not upset about that, you don't know what's going on. That's my view anyway.